Welcome to Bruges. We have 24 hours to explore this beautiful Belgian town. So let's get started. When you're coming to Bruges with suitcases, just beware of the cobbles underfoot. It is a little bit bumpy. But we've finally reached our hotel, the Boggenshop, and we are right in the centre of things. And I actually hear some clippity clop behind us. I think it's a horsey. Look! So let's check in, and Paul is going to show us around the room, aren't you? Hello. Welcome to our fabulous room. This is such a large room and there are really high ceilings, which is good for ventilation and it doesn't feel stuffy at all. Look at this magnificent background, uh, lovely flowers and nice fluffy pillows for Marcus to put his head on. And I think this is a nice firm mattress. It seems to be, I think, queen or king size. I don't know the difference. And this must be the bathroom. So this is a nice bath and shower. So Marcus could do his nice bath soap, which he loves to do as you saw in, in one of our previous episodes. And yeah, it looks like a good place. And we even have like some shoe shine stuff. Lots of different toiletries. And let's see what else I could show you. A nice big screen TV to get lost in programs, I guess, or what's local. Let's see what the view is like. So, mind you, this is one of those um, suites that is overlooking the river. So the river is right in front of you. We have another window on this side to give you maximum coverage. So this is a very popular um, river and lots of people like to photograph the river, especially from the bridge right over there where we see some people. I hope they're not waving at us because I don't want to wave back. This is a lovely location and in central Bruges. Look, there's even two chairs for us. Oh. oh, yeah, I think I can relax here for days. So when you come to Belgium, there are four staples that you must try out. And I'm not talking about the stapler <laughs> when, when you're putting pages together. Uh, but no, there is Paul. There is the Belgian chocolate, the Belgian beer. And we also have the Belgian fries and the waffles. So we are on a mission to track down all four. You can smell the chocolate oozing out of the shop. Do you think we should go in and uh, have a little taste? It 
So we did indeed go into Chocolate de Jewel. Um, and I decided to pick up these dark chocolate truffles. Um, and also this nice and very inviting selection box. I especially liked the look of this one, which was the sweet caramel oh, or salted caramel, lovely. I think. I think it's actually chocolate de Julie. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Jolly good. Okay. So that's the chocolate part of our mission accomplished. Well, it looks as though we really lucked out because we we've, did. we've come to this festival and they were giving fries out for free. So, uh, and it was you who heard all the, the noise in the first place. And, and uh, I thought, what the heck is going on back there? Yeah, so I think we should, we should try these. So hand one of those to me and uh, try them out, Paul. What do you think? Oh, wow. Yeah. Stick one in my mouth. Mmm. Do you like it? Maybe without the mayo on one of them. Mmm. So I don't think you can get fries that are any more Belgian than these. Absolutely free freaks. Free delicious. <laughs> free delicious. <laughs> And look, we have found our waffles and they are served with strawberries and chocolate sauce. Have a look at this. I think this is going to be absolutely delicious. So Paul, why did you get stuck in? Certainly, I'm not sure if I'm dipping in the chocolate. Oh wow. Don't spill it all over yourself. Look, I almost did. <laughs> Oh my god, this is fantastic. It's so good. Cheers everyone. Cheers waffling everyone. <laughs> Look, coffee with a gingerbread man as well. Okay, I'm gonna take my my leaves off. I'm going to pour a little bit of chocolate on the side, I think. Oh, let's just all of have it. all of it, yeah. We'll make it um, a river of chocolate. I'll get my napkin ready in case of any spillages, as I'm an old person now. Now, let's try this. Are you going to eat properly? <laughs> <laughs> I always eat properly. And look, you get one of your five a day with the... Uh, a bountiful amount. Mm. Okay, so let's try this. Mmm, lovely. Some strawberry too. Dipped in chocolate. Mmm, the perfect combination, I think. Is it dribbling all down me? No, you're good. I'm just salivating it. I guess if you want a beer, you go to the pub. And we've found a pub called The Pub. So let's see what they've got to offer.
The last time we came to Bruges, I always remembered a beer called Brugzy Zot. Because it's got a clown face, and that's the way you feel after drinking a few of them. You feel a little bit funny. <laughs> right, Paul? So I'm having one in a restaurant. Paul's having something else as well. I'm having Bionni de Flanders. I'm sure I didn't pronounce it correctly, but I've had a uh, really strong one before, so I do apologize for that. Well, of course, Flanders is the general area. I think that that we're in it also covers Lille in France, where we visited recently, and you will have seen that episode hopefully in the last few weeks. But you know, sometimes you like to take a little bit of your holiday home with you as well. Take a look at this. Of course, you don't have to go to a pub to find beer, and we have found an absolute beer emporium here, the bottle shop. So we made a few purchases at the bottle shop and I thought I would go for a very local beer, a uh, Bruges Blonde. So you can't get much more local than that. Paul, you got a couple of little things. I bought a Belgian single malt whiskey and a glass because it's always chic to have it in the glass it's meant to be in. It was a Carulus, is that correct? Carulus, yes. Single malt. They do lots of alcohol in here, gin, rum, everything, whiskey, beer, you name it, they do it. So definitely worth the visit. You can even explore beer further at the beer museum where you can have four types of beer for 10 euro. It says it in the sign. Discover the Bruges beer experience. This might be a good idea, especially on a wet day. Well, as mentioned earlier, we found this lovely Bruges art. It is a Belgian beer. It is what? It took about 500 mils or something. Looks larger than that. Does it say it over here? Um, it's 75 CL, so this is almost a liter. Um, this is a, this is a readily available beer, and I think we just wanted something to remind us of Belgium. So this is the first one, and this is the lovely um, whiskey that I bought from the bottle shop company. I think that's what they're called. So they sell Belgian produced alcohol. Okay, so I've, I haven't seen this before. This is the Gouden Carolus. Um, it is, I believe, 46%. Um, so this is similar to the whiskey that I would find back in the UK, such as the Highlands or the Island whiskeys. And there were other types of whiskey, but I thought it would be safe to just go for their standard one. They do also have the peated one and the sherry cask ones. I think that those vary in price upwards. So I decided to play it safe by going with this. Um, single malt, um, and I, I'm sure this will bring me many a good night. And yeah, so I would recommend all of you people out there to buy local whenever you are in Bruges and Belgium. Mm -hmm.
This is the Belfry. It towers over the Market Square in Bruges. What can you tell us about it, Marcus? The Bell Fort, or Belfry, dates back to the 13th century, is 83 meters high, and is protected as a World Heritage Site. The Belfry is one of the main landmarks of Bruges. For those that climb the 366 stairs, you will be rewarded with impressive views of Bruges and the surrounding area. It is one of the oldest examples of medieval urban and public architecture. We didn't climb the 366 steps. Well, I'm scared of heights, you see, and also the 14 euro fee to get up there. That was scary as well. But if you do have a head for heights, I think it probably is worth going up to have a look because I'm sure you'll get a fantastic view of Bruges and the surrounding areas. One last thing, they only accommodate a certain amount of people, so do expect a queue in order to get up there. And it's very easy to book. All you have to do is come in through the front entrance and there is an electronic ticket machine with all the information that you need. This is the Basilica of the Holy Blood. It is a Roman Catholic church in Bruges, built between 1134 and 1157. The church houses a relic of the Holy Blood. that we have a good rest of the stay in Bruges and I pray that we have pleasant weather and no rain and hope that there's good coverage that we get to get on video and pray for my family, pray for us and yeah, thank you Lord, Amen. This is a girl. Yes. Okay, so I am going to light a candle now. I should probably have my sunglasses on.
is the Rosen Hot Kai, the Rosary Bridge right behind me. This is the place that you will notice lots of people taking lots of pictures on Instagram just like us. We're being treated to some very special entertainment from a jazz band which has been giving some musical accompaniment to the Mayor's special message for 2023 in which he said, if I can translate a little bit of it, uh, that Belgium and Bruges stands in solidarity with Ukraine and a very good message that is indeed. And was the oorlog in Ukraine. Die startte in februari. We voelen mee met het leed van onze Oekraïnse vrienden en voelen de gevolgen van deze crisis in uw portefeuille, portefeuille maar ook in onze stadskas. De stijgende energieprijzen, de inflatie, hebben ook onze stad uitgedaagd om ons budget onder controle te houden. Crisissen als deze leiden gelukkig ook tot een golf van solidariteit. De gastvrijheid kan vele bruggelijnen om mee Oekraïnse vluchtelingen tijdelijk op te vangen is hard verwarmend. What a festival this is because we've got free beer as well. You basically line up and there's a whole range of drinks. There was like uh, mulled apple juice, wine, apple juice, oranges. oranges, hot chocolate as well, and two types of beer, the blonde and the dark. So we both went went for a blonde. So cheers, everyone. Cheers. Come to Bruges. You never know. There might be a festival with free fries and beers. Why not? Cheers. Mm. Bottoms up. Mmm. This tastes fabulous. Delicious. for watching our show today please continue to like comment and subscribe look at this fabulous tea shop Paul look yeah look at uh, these mugs they seem very very um, unique and very um, detailed um, and I quite like all the names on these mugs home is where my cat is and that we are family. A breakfast club. Yeah, the breakfast, the breakfast club. club is the chickens because they provide the eggs. <laughs> we are family, it's a family of sheep. Happiness is time spent with horses. All you need is love and a dog. And I quite like this one up at the top. Eat plants, not friends. And there's a picture of one of our Mui friends. <laughs> Look at all these animals over here. A family of dogs. 
That looks like a Scotty dog in the middle. Ooh. And a very, very wise looking sheep. Look at the raccoon. The raccoon? Where's the raccoon? Right there. Oh, I thought that was a... That's the one I thought was the Scotty dog. <laughs> <laughs> and look at these extremely intricate teapots made of books. And we have robins down here and a mm. mouse and a cat. Oh, they're all absolutely fabulous. Do you think we should go in? Okay. Look, it's my favorite store. We are doing a little bit of shopping and I think I really must pay a visit to CNA. Now, I must admit, I went in earlier and there's a few things that I saw that I liked, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna buy them. So I decided to think about it for a little while and come back. So we're gonna take a look now. I like the look of this jumper. This one? Yeah. Oh, you got me one just like that though. Did I? Yeah, I think I have like... Loads. You don't like the look of this jumper? I do, but I don't really need any jumpers. All right. How much is this? It's a bit too. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Plus, it's got the food. I don't like hoops. Well, maybe this jumper is right for me after all. I do have a lot of jumpers, but as you sort of recommended it, it's a thread of that. But, but look at the size of the, if I'm extra, extra large, this is like ginormous. But how often are we at CNA? That's the only reason why I'm thinking maybe you should consider it. Look, they have the gray one, which is what I was looking for. So I'm gonna try that. Let's let's get one with like a thread. So we've had success. What I, did you get? Well, I got a nice jacket. It's got pockets just where I want them. And believe you me, I've bought jackets where the pockets just have not been good enough. The jumper that you saw that I relented and bought in the end, and a pair of jogging bottoms because the ones that I have are getting a little bit on the worn side. I, so. I think that that jumper was nice and trendy, I think. Yes, I might even wear it while we are here. Well, now it is over to Paul and he is at Scotch and Soda. Well, I did say that this is one of my favorite brands, so I think when in Rome, go to the actual article. So let's go in.
Scotch and soda certainly it didn't let me down as I got something today. <laughs> it has to be done sometimes. Okay, onwards and upwards. As an uh, additional purchase, I've also gone to the Massimo Duty. What did you get? I got this blue number that is kind of like a polo, but it's very, very dressy like. So yeah, I did need something like that in the wardrobe. So yeah, I think all boxes are ticked now. Good, that is the end of the shopping then. All right, see you later, bye. There's so much more to see of Bruges. Here are a few of our highlights. There's fantastic architecture to be found everywhere you look in Bruges. You might not know what it is, but hey, just take it in. Enjoy the sights. If you're very lucky while in Bruges, you might discover a little home for little people. Don't believe me? Take a look at this. Hello. Is anybody in? If you're into your art, especially Spanish art, you could visit the Salvador Dali Museum in Bruges. It costs 10 euro to get in, and I'm sure it is quite a good experience. So this is where all the horses congregate before being ridden by some people. So here is where they are stationed before um, visitors get on them to take a nice stroll around Bruges.
This is the Boniface Bridge, isn't that right, Paul? Yes, this is the Boniface Bridge. And what can you tell us about it? It is right next to the Madonna Cathedral behind us. Ah, so that is the tower, I suppose, of the church, and we can hear the bells ringing right now. This is the mini water park. Now, it doesn't just mean it's a small park with water in it, although actually that is what it seems to be, but it is a uh, lake of love, the Love Lake. And the saying goes that if you walk over this bridge, you will fall in love if you are not in love already. Aww. And it forms part of a wider green area, which is quite close to the railway station. So if you're heading back on your last day or if you're here for just 24 hours and you're going back to the, the station to get your train back into Brussels, well, it's a nice little stroll to enjoy your last bit of Bruges. Mini Water Park, the Lake of Love, is located in the south part of Bruges. The tragic romance of Mina and her warrior love Stromberg has evolved into local legend that you'll experience eternal love if you walk over the love bridge with your partner. The Lake of Love is an exceptionally romantic spot.
The bells are tolling. That means that our 24 hours in Bruges have come oh, to an no. end. Yes, it's very sad. And the rain's starting to come down as well, so it's just as well that we're about to go. What has been your highlight, Paul? The bar. Ah, the pub, you mean? The pub, for sure. <laughs> And I think for me, it really was getting to CNA because I have to admit, we went back again and got a few we more did. bits. So before we get completely drenched, we're going to say bye for now. Bye. See you next time. See you bye. bye.